So welcome to another Awaken Your Feminine Power live event. I love hosting these organic discussions, bringing powerful women together to discuss and share and, you know, just be in the energy of learning from each other on, you know, this topic of feminine energy and also masculine energy. So we're going to be diving deep into this. Um, I would love to know where you're at on this subject. Is this something that you're brand new to? Um, if it is, throw a one in the chat box. And if it's something that you're already well-versed in, um, like you can teach this and you're just here to share and, and be part of the container, then that's cool too. Put a 10. So one being a brand new and 10 being you teach this and this is something that you know, this is, this is your journey and you completely understand everything about feminine and masculine energy. That sort of helps me gauge a little bit where everyone is. And so we can, um, it helps guide the conversation if I know where everybody's starting from. So we got a lot of ones today. This is awesome. So this is really exciting. Um, let's see a few more people go ahead and throw in where you're at on the scale of one to 10. four, five. Perfect. Yay. Okay. Perfect. So this is going to be fun. And, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to dive into this concept of feminine and masculine energy. The whole idea is to help give, um, you know, uh, conversation that can be awakening or, uh, enlightening in some way to help open up to this on a deeper level. And I'm going to be pointing to um, concepts that are beyond just, um, this is not, let me just preface, I guess this is not gender specific, right? So what this is not is it's not feminism. Feminine energy is not feminism and we are not discounting or dishonoring masculine energy in any way. In actuality, we're doing the opposite of that. And we're fully embracing masculine energy. Uh, the thing is, is though we're bringing in aligned masculine energy. And so the reason this conversation is so potent and powerful at this time right now is because there is an awakening to um, women and men, not all genders, awakening to fully embodying more of their feminine essence. Again, this is not gender specific. There's also an honoring and an embodying of our sacred masculine energy. It's been distorted for so long. We, we operate in a very masculine dominant culture and society, most of us. And we have been gauging our success and our worthiness and our value off of externalized factors such as success or, or money or houses or cars or careers or um, what we look like and, and all of these externalized factors. And this is a very masculine dominant way to exist. And there's a calling in the collective now to wake up to the inner essence of who we truly are, which is really embracing that feminine essence. So the feminine and masculine uh, labels, I guess you could call them, they're labels that point to the polarity that exists within all things, um, including us. And so this will make more sense as we dive deeper. And um, we're going to have plenty of time for organic discussion. Um, we're going to dive deeper into identifying different um, toxic cycles and how to break free from those cycles. And then we're going to see where the conversation flows. Sometimes we talk about the dark feminine, which is um, the opposite of the light feminine. And that is not bad when you say dark feminine. Um, dark feminine is uh, two sides of the same coin for feminine energy. We actually need to embrace all um, Sides of ourselves in order to fully come into alignment and full embodiment of our true nature. And so we're just going to see how this flows. I like to keep it organic as possible. But knowing that there's a lot of ones in the chat box, women that are just starting out on this journey, we're going to dive deep at the very beginning, which is what the feminine and masculine energy point to when I say it's not gender specific. Um, and so, but before we get started, um, I guess I should say welcome. My name is Sarah and um, I'm an embodiment coach and I help female um, leaders, visionaries, artists, creative, creatives, entrepreneurs um, really step into their feminine essence and fully embody their, what I refer to as their empress energy. And um, that'll make more sense as we unfold here. 
But prior to this, my life was in real estate and uh, I was in real estate for over 10 or 12 years. And maybe you can relate to this a little bit. Um, so it was a very hustle, hustle um, way. It was a very hustle and grind kind of business for myself. And I was in very much hyper masculine energy. Um, so what that looked like was on the 3D level, on the physical level, is there was a lot of burnout. Um, there was a lot of chasing that proverbial carrot outside of myself um, to the point of exhaustion. So there was never enough clients. There was never enough money. I was always chasing clients or money or success or a newer car or whatever the case may be. And so um, there was a lot of hustle. There was a, a lot of guilt taking any time off from myself. Uh, there was really a lack of self-care. There was the um, very like zero energy around nurturing my own energy. So I was constantly depleting myself. I was uh, always um, bleeding my boundaries dry, um, uh, not having healthy boundaries around my time, around my energy around, you know, and this could be with clients, this could be in relationships. Um, and so zero healthy boundaries. Um, I was a people pleaser and an overgiver um, at my own expense and uh, with a total lack of self-care, really carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders, um, feeling like I needed to do it all. And um, this was uh, a byproduct of really me really not trusting myself and not trusting life. Um, and so this masculine energy goes into overprotection mode. And so I had to do everything myself. And so I adopted this Wonder Woman syndrome. I call it misindependent. Um, I don't need anybody else. I don't need help. I can do it all myself. If it's got to be done, it's got to be done right. I have to do it, blah, blah, blah. Very much a control freak at that point, um, having to control all of the details and micromanage everything. And um, it was very stressful. And this was um, really a byproduct of me not being in my feminine essence and not being able to open and trust. And so I had major guards up, uh, protect over protection. And this is the masculine energy overprotected, um, lots of walls up, um, especially around my heart. And so at this time, I was also attracting a revolving door of relationships that were reflecting back to me a lack of intimacy or a lack of connection or a lack of emotional vulnerability and a lack of commitment. So I found myself chasing the very thing that I wanted most, which was intimacy, but I was also blocking it at the same time. So the universe could really only reflect back to me someone that would not require me to open up and not be emotionally vulnerable or available. And so that's what I was attracting in. So, okay, so this is still all very much a byproduct of operating from quote unquote, wounded feminine energy. And I say the word wounded lightly because I don't believe we're wounded at our core. And then this masculine energy going into overprotection mode to safeguard myself um, against my environment, against my, my you know, and, and having up all these walls. So there was really a lack of healthy boundaries, but instead there were walls. And so there's a huge difference between having a healthy boundary because boundaries are permeable, like boundaries let the good stuff in walls just block everything out. And so what I had at that time was walls up. And so I was literally blocking even everything that I desired most in life. And so this was very stressful. I was very easily angered or moved to irritability, completely stressed out. I was eating every meal in my car, not taking time for myself, zero self-care. This led to a lot of stress, as you can imagine, um, which caused health issues like gut gut health issues and hormone imbalances and weight gain and food allergies and IBS and candida and all the things until I eventually shot my immune system because I was just running on adrenaline and cortisol and not taking time for myself. So my nervous system was shot as well. And I landed myself in the emergency room with pneumonia because I had no other, you know, natural defenses. I was getting flu after flu after flu, still working while I had the flu, showing houses until the, eventually I landed in the emergency room because I couldn't breathe because my lungs were fluing, filling up with fluid uh, because I had pneumonia, walking pneumonia. And so there was also this perfectionism 
because I was constantly needing external validation outside of myself, again, chasing that proverbial carrot for some form of validation or worthiness. And so there was also putting up a front and a facade that everything was okay and worried about how I looked and, and what, you know, and the externalized factors, but deep down inside, it was a front and I was miserable. And, um, and I knew that, but uh, I thought I was putting up a good front and, and it looked good from the inside out. Uh, I mean, from the outside in, people would think maybe that everything was fine, but deep down inside, I was sort of crumbling. And so that that led to uh, wanting to sell everything and move to Costa Rica. And I often joke about this. The only reason I didn't is because I had dogs, my dogs, I couldn't figure out how to move my dogs. And and there was no healthy way to do that, at least. And so um, that was just a form of escapism, though. I thought I'm just going to sell all my stuff, sell my house, move to Costa Rica, do yoga on the beach and be done with all my worries and all my stress. And that was just a fancy way to escape from the tornado that I was uh, in. And um, that's something that the ego likes to do. The ego likes to escape situations or numb out to situations, enter wine nights and Netflix binges until, you know, it, and doing that to numb out or, you know, whatever. So, so I was numbing out or wanting to escape. Um, or fighting against is the other thing that, you know, the ego really likes to do is resist and resist and fight against what's happening and try to control it and things like that. So the very last thing on my mind was surrendering to this process. The very last thing in my mind was actually going inward, but I was still getting the intuitive hits. And so what happened was I didn't move to Costa Rica. I did find myself at a place in my life where the one thing I deeply craved was health and harmony and just with my body and a sense of freedom and physical well-being and having a healthy relationship first and foremost with myself and peace and ease and being able to flow through life. I looked at other women that seem to have it all and make it look so easy and everything for me always seemed like such a struggle or an uphill battle. And so I wanted harmony. And so I went on a self-discovery journey, had a spiritual awakening. It's the start, the onset of a spiritual awakening in 2012, which led me to traveling and soul searching and deep diving into some inner work and getting certified in, in yoga and energy healing and um, cleaning up my diet and non-GMO and, and clean eating and all of these things. And so at first I attacked everything at the physical level and I started to see results. My health obviously improved, which is what a lot of us do when stuff like this starts to happen. We start to, we tend to either go, it's different for everyone, but I went towards the physical. What can I do to make my life better? And it was clean up my eating, heal my body and things like that, which then led to the next thing, which then led to the next thing and yada, yada. Um, and so here I found myself, um, you know, certified in yoga, advanced yoga therapy training, energy healing, um, Reiki master, like all the things, and still finding myself, yes, at a healthier state, and more in alignment with my body, but still finding myself sucked into patterns of um, settling for less than what I know I deserve, compromising my values, hustling and overworking, um, putting myself last and um, not in it, realizing that this whole time also I was never, I was, as I was over giving, I was also not speaking my truth. And so those cycles still repeated. And it wasn't until I started to really dive deeper into feminine and masculine energy that these patterns started to um, dissolve. And you flip the script on the toxic patterns and you become and, and you you get to enter the alignment loop of feminine energy and sacred masculine energy within yourself versus the toxic loop, which is the wounded feminine energy and then the overcompensating masculine energy that comes in because the masculine is operating on the sense of void or or lack of worthiness or feeling like something's missing. And so the masculine has no choice but to go out and try to protect and safeguard that. 
Um, many of us have learned at some point along the way that it wasn't safe to trust and it wasn't safe to be open and it wasn't safe to be vulnerable or share in a vulnerable way and open our hearts. Um, and so a lot of women that are attracted to my trainings ha or have gone through something like that where they're and even if it's not a traumatic event, it could just, it's just conditioning in general. We are in a society um, told that there's a certain way to look and a certain way to be. And there's this validation that we need outside of ourselves in order to check all the boxes and feel good about ourselves. It's all hinging on this sense that we're not already whole, we're not already complete, or that there's some part of us that is wounded or broken. And what the feminine energy points to is the very essence of your being, uh, which is not broken at your, which is not wounded, but there is programming or conditioning there that may say otherwise that we've been buying into for way too long, which keeps us on this um, toxic loop, if that's making sense. And so that's how I got here. And um, I would love to know in the chat box or if anybody wants to unmute. I know there's a few people that joined a little late. So just know that if you do raise your hand and have anything to share that you it won't you won't stay anonymous because this is this is a replay that goes out to everyone that registered and it goes on YouTube and stuff. But um, if you want to stay anonymous, then use the chat box. I would love to know if any of this resonates um, with any any component of that, any place. Um, that you've recognized in your life where you've been settling or, or selling yourself short or have unhealthy boundaries or lack of boundaries rather and or over giving from an empty cup self-sacrificing compromising what you know is really available for you um, for fear of um, not being validated in some way so oh, I recognize that I was latching on to relationships and success or image or money or a new car or clothing or whatever it was, um, I was latching onto these things as a form of validation outside of myself, which only repeats um, and fuels the pattern. Um, and it's an endless vicious cycle that we cannot jump off. We cannot get off of this vicious cycle in the same, in that way. It only repeats the pattern, if that makes sense. And so part of this call today is to just help identify where we're stuck in these kind of toxic loops, which you can just be doing behind the scenes as you're tuning in here. You don't have to share. Um, but hopefully this is like, you know, getting, you know, something might be bubbling up that you can bring awareness to um, that allows, you know, to bring in conscious presence and awareness around some of the cycles that have been playing out. And then we're going to share some tools and techniques and things like that and just organic conversation on how to flip the script on that and come more into aligned feminine and masculine energy. So again, for everybody that tuned in a little late, um, feminine and masculine energy is not gender specific. Men and women uh, have feminine and masculine energy. And so, and there's a collective of men and women that are opening up to this. I know many men that are opening up to their feminine energy and very much women that are embodying their sacred masculine energy. And it's actually two sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other. And we're gonna dive deeper into that because right now there's so much talk about feminine energy even the name of my brand, Divine Femme, it's all about feminine energy, right? But if we don't bring in the masculine energy, our feminine will never feel safe to open up. And so we're going to talk about that. So Carmen, I see you. Go ahead. You have your hand up. You can go ahead and unmute. Let me go ahead. I can. Okay. Here you are. So I, I was one of the late comers, actually. And so I probably need a little bit better definition of the feminine masculine energy a little bit. But what I've realized is that my pattern in life has been to uh, get into the feeling that I need to have someone else with me in order to um, be safe. Mm -hmm. And so I have um, unfortunately attracted um, abusive relationships mm -hmm. because even though it was negative, it was normal in my mind. Mm -hmm. And so um, now over the last few years, I have realized that I need to shift my energy mm -hmm. so that I'm able to attract what I'm 
what I need or what I deserve to have versus what I have been doing in the past. Mm-hmm. So, although it's been, I've gone through some pretty painful events, mm-hmm. um, I still have gratitude that it led me to this point mm-hmm. that now I can um, be more aware of how do I do that self-care to bring the positive energy to me and then fill myself with that energy to draw in even more energy. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. And I can totally empathize with your situation as well. And it's oftentimes some of these turbulent times and even relationships are a great mirror for us because we're able to, this has been a big part of, uh, I'm very familiar with this journey of self abandonment and self betrayal over time and, and how often I sold myself short and allowed things to go on beyond their expiration, you know, painting red flags green. So I could stay in something that was more comfortable, even though it wasn't serving me at the highest level. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah, thank you for, and so did you have something else? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just, I, um, I'm, celebrating uh, this month was the end of a uh, extremely abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's like the chapter has been closed. Mm -hmm. So now I'm able to focus just on learning the different skills that sounds like you're going to share with us a little bit. Oh my goodness. I love that. Well, congratulations on celebrating the end of a cycle and celebrating a new beginning. One based on choosing yourself and putting yourself first Mm -hmm. and recognizing, yeah, we're going to dive deeper into some of this. Um, This will make more sense as it unfolds. And then thank you for sharing and being vulnerable as well. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Perfect. Does anybody else have any comments or um, anything they'd like to share? I see some comments in the chat box. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. It's just resonating, totally resonating. I feel the same. I feel like I can relate. Okay. So let's just dive deeper into this, ladies. So, all right, where do we want to begin? So, so when we think of feminine and masculine energy, now that we know that it's not really a gender specific thing, what the feminine points to is the subtle realm. It's the, it's the, it's our, it's our beingness. It's our, it's what we, you can't taste it. You can't touch it. You can't see it. You can't feel it. It's an embodiment, right? The masculine points to the externalized realm. And so it would make sense that because we live in this 3D reality that is always um, patting us on the back for all of our successes or how we look or what we're doing or what we're wearing, basically, or or what we're achieving or what we're building and things like that. It's very externalized validation. Um, And so we live in this masculine culture and society that has been promoting that um, while with a lack of and and then there's a lack of us going inward and connecting with who we truly are so we're operating from a void where we're walking around with other beings on this planet and we're validating each other by what we see and we're bumping into other people and then we're using ourselves to compare to those other people so it's one big you know um until we're conscious of what we're doing and we bring conscious presence and awareness to it we're, we're almost operating on autopilot just as this condition to be externally validating ourselves. But I think we can see in society that there are plenty of examples of people that have achieved all forms of outwardly success in fame or money or, or, or business achievements or whatever. And they end up miserable inside because they're, they're, spiritually bankrupt inside they're they're not connected to who they truly are and they've been they they've been thriving and on this external form of validation that deep down um they're not connected to who they truly are and there's this void there and so and so we're going to talk a little bit more about the role of this feminine and masculine energy because really what this points to is duality um this polarity that exists And this is all, um, this is my opinion or my, what what has been shown to me is that we are all connected at our core and we are all 
oneness at our core. We are all um, love. We are all, we are all that is, we are all connected. And so this is not something that can be easily explained. Um, life will show you this in your own way. But in order for this oneness to experience itself, there's um, this duality, there's this polarity, there's this swing back and forth. And so we have feminine and masculine, we have in and out, up and down, left and right, above and below, inner and outer. And so we have this du duality um, and this is how we're able to experience things on this 3D level. Otherwise we would still just be the essence of who we are, which is oneness, which is energy, which is spirit, soul, consciousness, awareness, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so when you recognize that this feminine and masculine energy is actually pointing to something deeper, it's literally the energies that create worlds and allows us to experience this in this, this uh, 3D world that we're existing in. And it exists yeah. in everything. Um, and so we have this polarity within ourselves. And so the feminine energy um, is very, because it points to that inner world, that inner realm, the subtle realm is very empathic. So I'm just gonna name some qualities of the feminine energy and then compare it to the masculine energy. Um, so the feminine energy is very empathic, it's very intuitive. This is your intuition, this is your knowingness. This is um, really being empowered from the inside out. This is also connected to your creative energy, um, you know, that inspiration that comes out. Um, it's very fluid. It's very flowing. It's very um, open to receive. And you can see a lot of, you can see these qualities in nature. Nature is a great example of feminine energy. Everything is in perfect sync and flowing. Effortlessly, things are working out. The masculine energy is very mental and analytical and logical. And it's that giving energy. It's also that protective energy. It's very grounding. It's very stable. Um, so think of masculine energy as what gives this 3D world structure, right? The structure of this 3D world is a very masculine quality while the, the air and the spaciousness that you see, the breath that you breathe, it would be a very feminine quality in contrast to that. So everything has this feminine and masculine quality to it. So the masculine is also very courageous energy and very intellectually focused. Um, and so, and it's very powerful and strong, but in an externalized sense where the feminine is very empowered from within. Does that make sense? So you actually have two sides of the same coin here that go together. And we'll talk about boundaries really quick because this is a big theme um, that needs to be talked about with a lot of um, people, women that show up in this container and myself included, and it's been a huge part of my journey. So for example, if we're stuck in a situation where we know in our heart that is not meant for us, or there's an, an intuitive knowing, or there's an impulse or something, and we ignore that, um, and we're not following our truth, um, then the other side of that is that there's an unhealthy boundary and it's the masculine energy that draws that protective boundary, right? And so you actually need both in order to come into alignment. So when you trust in your knowingness and you trust in your intuition and you trust in, in yourself and in your own heart, what's right for you the masculine energy is the courageous energy that goes out and sets that boundary in order to protect that safe space, in order to protect that knowingness, if that makes sense, right? So for example, when it comes to boundaries, if um, coming into alignment with your value system first and foremost is very you know, part of the feminine essence, knowing your value system, your inner values, what you resonate with, what you hold sacred, what your intuition is telling you, what you know in your heart's heart, right? Like all of that, the masculine energy is the courageous energy that's going to take that action and draw that line in the sand and protect that. 
And like I was sharing at the beginning of my story, when I was operating from wounded feminine energy, my masculine energy was operating from distorted energy and it was going out and drawing boundaries, but it was putting up walls where boundaries should be. And it was pushing people away. And it had a guard, I had a guarded heart and I was a control freak. And I was, I was not able to trust anybody because I wasn't able to trust myself. Um, oh, no. Because the inner reality and the outer reality are the same. They're just a reflection. So when the masculine can go out, can go out and take that courageous action and actually just draw a healthy boundary because you know your worth, because you're resting in, in the knowingness of your true essence, which is a spark of God. You know, you are a divine being. You are at your core, a divine being worthy of all that you desire. And when you fully trust and know this, the masculine energy can now act from an honorable place instead of a distorted place and draw that healthy line in the sand and have a healthy boundary, which then protects that space so your feminine can feel even more safe to open up. The mistake that I was making was that I was seeking my safety in the form of an external relationship to provide that masculine energy for me to feel safe. But all I was drawing in was toxic toxicity or reflection a reflecting a relationship that reflected back to me my inability to open up because I was seeking that masculine energy outside of myself when in actuality I needed to strengthen my own inner masculine I needed to take my own courageous action I needed to draw my own line in the sand and uphold a healthy boundary I needed to uphold my own value system and so when you see a, a woman that really owns her feminine energy and has healthy boundaries and is attracting in and magnetic to what she truly desires, she has a strong, solid, sacred, masculine energy that is integrated, right? She is not a yes woman. She's not saying yes when she means no. She's not saying no when she means yes. She is not over giving of her time. She has no problem saying you know no to something if it's not going to serve her at the highest level or it's going to deplete her right and so what happens is when you set this intention to bring this into balance your feminine and masculine energy the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to be challenged to face your fears of lack or scarcity or unworthiness or unlovability or anything that has been conditioned in us to show us that that, that to try to convince us that we're not lovable or worthy or that we need to sacrifice in some way. So for example, it could be time to end a relationship and you know this in your heart and your intuition has been telling you this or even screaming this to you, but you've been ignoring it. The masculine energy is going to have to take a courageous action. And so those choice points will pop up in your reality when you set the intention to come into alignment with this. And that means that you're going to have to make different decisions than what you made before. And as Carmen pointed out, sometimes those decisions are the uncomfortable decisions that are not familiar patterns for us and entering into unknown, uncharted territory for us and being able to, for the first time, sometimes in our entire life, feel safe being with ourselves and not needing this external validation and being able to trust wholeheartedly in our own intuition and our guidance system um, and so that we can take action from that place. And so in order to come into alignment, what happens is the things that are out of alignment have to fall away. And sometimes those things fall away very easily and effortlessly. And sometimes those things that fall away create tower moments in our life where things tend to like crumble and really shake our foundation. Because what we've been building is a house of cards on a shaky foundation. And when you are ready to call in um, the abundance and the prosperity and the joy and the love and everything that you deserve in this lifetime. Sometimes things that are built, not sometimes, but the, everything that's built on this shaky foundation, this unsolid, this, you know, unsolid foundation has to come down, has to dissolve, has to fall away, has to transform or in some way, right? And so relationships can transform, for example, or they can fall away. Um, careers can transform or they can fall away. Um, life circumstances can transform or some 
people in your life can transform, you know, the relationship can transform. And so this is platonic or, or romantic or whatever, or they can fall away. And the falling away process is a really hard process for the ego to handle because it involves a really a letting go of what is familiar and breaking an old condition pattern and belief system. And there's a lot of history there and there's a lot of believing or buying into a story or a narrative. And there's a lot of fear around that sometimes, which can seem very real when you're in it. Um, and so letting go and allowing things to unfold naturally and releasing, letting go what's not in alignment is very ego, um, scary to the ego. And what happens is the ego will try to latch on and try to hold on just a little bit longer. Maybe things will change. Oh, I'm just going to make another, you know, paint another red flag green and eventually things will change. And um, they can transform and they can change. But if they're not, then there's an action that is bubbling up in you that you probably know needs to be taken. Um, and so those choice points will be presented to you. And this is where the magic happens because this is where you're able to finally choose your, choose your highest and greatest good and choose your own self-sovereignty and trust in yourself and, um, and the unknown that everything's going to be working out. And that takes so much courage, so much faith, and so much trust in the face of the fears of lack or scarcity or not being good enough or unworthy or being alone or blah, 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 all, all the stories that the mind likes to spin. It's in the face of all of that, that these decisions are usually made. And it's, this is part of coming back into alignment though and flipping the script on the toxic cycle so you can come back into alignment with your feminine and masculine balance and so so um is that making sense i i want to be able to check in with you guys and see if that's resonating so that's just an example around boundaries on how feminine and masculine energy are two sides of the same coin and getting really clear on your value systems and having healthy boundaries is going to be a very good entry point. Cause I know a lot of people dropped a one in the um, chat box here when we started. So you're just getting used to this, um, uh, this topic of feminine and masculine energy. And so a really good entry uh, point for this is to really take some time to come in to slow down, come into presence, come into you know, silence with yourself and get honest with yourself on what it is you truly value and, and connect with that. Because ultimately coming full circle, divine feminine energy that I speak about, which I had at the beginning of my story, I was exhibiting no characteristics of a feminine, divine feminine embodiment, but a divine feminine in her essence, when you, when you and when I say divine feminine, we all have this energy. I use that as a term to describe or label the your empress energy, the one that you're one that truly knows her worth at, at her innermost level as a divinely worthy woman, right? She speaks her truth. She nurtures her body and her mind and her spirit. She takes time for herself. She has healthy boundaries around her energy and her time. And she shows up authentically. Um, she lives in the present moment. So this is key. We'll dive into that maybe a little bit if we have time. She embraces her, you know, all aspects of her being, her, her sexuality, her sensuality. She's, she's not inhibiting herself in any way. And she's open to receiving. Oftentimes we feel it's unsafe to receive and that's because we're still operating from the wounded feminine energy. She's open to receiving. She's very clear on her values and she trusts her intuition and lives in harmony uh, with herself and nature and the ebbs and flows of nature. So if you were here at the beginning, the cycle that I was stuck in, there was absolutely none of that. But as you start to embody these pieces, the masculine energy is going to work in tandem with you to allow your feminine essence to open and feel safe. 
the mistake I see a lot of women making, including myself in the past, was looking for the externalized world to allow me to feel safe and to allow me to open up and trust and allow me to feel uh, feel okay, safe to feel vulnerable. And yes, having a relationship where this is reflected back to you is something that is, is definitely nurturing. But those relationships come as a byproduct of your own inner those circumstances, situations, relationships, life in general is a mirror. Your inner reality, your outer reality, your feminine essence, your masculine, right? Externalized world. They're one. They're one and of the same. And they're a reflection of your own inner alignment. So basically, to cut to the chase, there's no escaping. There's no amount of escaping and there's no amount of latching on of any other outside circumstance, situation, person or place or thing that's going to be able to bring you into inner alignment. And it's only the inner alignment with your true worth as a divinely, wor divinely worthy woman that will allow the externalized world to repopulate and move around as needed crumble, fall away, transform, whatever has to happen in order to bring it into sync and alignment with the light that is now shining through you, the light that gets to shine through you, which is what happens when we open up to our feminine essence. The light finally gets to shine through us. You become more creative. You become more of your most authentic expression. You're no longer worried about what other people think or say um, because you're just allowing yourself to be free, freely yourself, wild and untamed and, and your own version of you, whatever that is, whatever wants to come through you. And you're trusting in that and you're trusting in your knowing and you're trusting in your heart and your intuition that there's this new energy that has been it's not new. It's just been dormant. It's been suppressed, um, is now able to shine through. If that makes sense. And, uh, this is when we, when we talk about feminine magnetism, that's what we're referring to. We're talking about the natural byproduct of allowing your feminine essence and the light to shine through because you're so connected to your own, um, sense of beingness and, and um, authenticity. Does that's making sense? Does anybody have um, questions or comments? I'd love to, um, I can't stress enough. I just have to say, I'll check the comments right now as well. Um, the present moment is the gateway. Present moment is the gateway. And, and as I stated before, the masculine energy is very um, analytical and in the mind. So a really good tell when we're coming out of our, when we're not connected to our feminine essence is when we're hanging out in the mental body and we're in our thoughts, we're in our mind, we're not connected to our body. The feminine essence is very connected to her body and her emotions and, 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 and connected inwardly. And oftentimes, especially if, if there was anything that ever ta taught us, it was not safe to be who we are or say what, speak our truth or be in our, in our, in our essence, then one of the quickest ways to escape that would be to go to the mind. And so that can be a big tell for a lot of people hanging out in the mind and the, and the mental body, bringing it back to presence and grounding back into your body is, um, is a, is a quick gateway, I guess you could say to connecting to your feminine essence. Um, there's others as well, but present moment, um, recognizing when the mind is taking you from past or future project, you know, rem ruminating on the past or moving into future projections and the worry and the, the mind is duality, like I was sharing before, and you're just bouncing back and pinging back and forth between the mental body, between the, the, the duality of life versus coming into oneness with who you truly are, which has no opposite because you are source, you are conscious awareness, you are life itself. You are, you are whatever you want to call it, whatever word you want to label it. This is who you truly are, even though you're having this physical experience in this 3D world as Carmen, as Joy, as Liz, as Susan, you're having this 3D experience 
but it's not the essence of who you are at your core. And that's what the feminine essence points to. And that's what the feminine essence represents. The masculine energy will represent the externalized world, which are the same. The inner and the outer are the same, the feminine and the masculine. They're two sides of the same coin, even though they appear different. So this is a paradox. They're two sides of the same coin, even though they appear different. Does that make sense? I mean, it's not going to make sense. Actually, I shouldn't even ask that question because the ment the bot the mind is not meant to really understand this because the mind is duality. So we won't dive into that. That's a deeper conversation. But um, but I wanted to at least touch on boundaries in this whole, and uh, we might have time to touch on light feminine and dark feminine as well, if that's interesting to you, or maybe healing the wounded feminine heart. Um, there's different topics we can talk on in the time remaining. So I'd love to have your feedback or questions or comments in the chat box, or if you want to unmute, I uh, can definitely do that as well. Vandana, can you can you please put in the chat box a little bit more? I unless you want to unmute, how to feel protected? Then, um, can you go ahead and elaborate on that? So if the feminine represents our inner realm and the subtle realm, you can think that it, rep, you know, it, it represents the ebbs and flows of nature. It represents um, the rhythms of nature, the fluidity of life, our breath, spaciousness, where the masculine would represent our externalized 3D world, the structures or our societal rules and things like that, that are externalized that give it structure. But everything has feminine and masculine energy. So for example, I always use this as an example. If you've watched some of my other videos, like this cup has masculine and feminine principles. So the structure is the cup itself that you see, the tangible, touch it, gives it form, structure and stability. But what we forget to pay attention to is the spaciousness inside the cup, which is actually the whole purpose of it and what makes it, you know, useful. Um, so the feminine principle would be the spaciousness inside the cup that you can't see, right? But they both coexist, right? And so you can see this in all aspects of, of of our of life of creation of the universe there's this polarity there's relativity you know einstein call it there's this duality so what we're really doing is we're harnessing the energies of this dualistic nature that we exist in called 3d earth whatever you want to call it this 3d experience that we're having this touch and taste experience that is always has this dualistic expression and we're harnessing and we're, we're embodying the energies of that within our own being because we are not separate from all of this. We are actually one with all of it. And I just want to leave that, you know, think about energy in general. Like if you think about even, um, you know, science and particles and atoms, if you boil those down, what you get is a lot of spaciousness. You get like 99% space, right? And so what does that mean? It means that solids are actually also energy. They're simultaneous. The solid, the beingness that you think you are, this body is actually energy. So the energy would be the feminine principle and the body that you see would be the structure, would be the masculine principle. But yet, just like the coffee cup, they are one, they coexist. You can't have one without the other. I shouldn't say you can't have one without the other because oneness is really all that is. And this is what allows duality to exist. Otherwise you would still just be oneness. So I shouldn't say you can't have one without the other, but because of this dualist expre expression, we're able to sit here on this Zoom call and have this meeting and talk about feminine energy and masculine energy. And so that's another level of a conversation, but I just wanted to 
um, throw that in there uh, because there's a, when you start to tap into this, this is what really has helped me on my path, really tap into a sense of trust that is beyond trust and confidence that is beyond confidence, not confidence that is, a, you know, I'm confident because I feel good today and tomorrow I don't feel good. So I'm not going to be confident or confident today because I like the color of my clothing and tomorrow my clothing doesn't fit that well. And so I'm not going to be confident, not that kind of confidence that is wavering and stuck in the pendulum swing of duality, right? And not trust that is wavering and stuck in, oh, I trust today because things are working out for me, but tomorrow, you know, we'll see tomorrow. We'll see. Maybe I will trust. Maybe I won't trust tomorrow. Right. And so you have this wavering trust. This is faith. This is faith and trust in the unknown and in the essence of who you truly are with where there is no wavering. There's no more pendulum swinging. There's no more duality swinging. The thing that's helped me get there the most as, as it relates to embodying a feminine principle and feminine essence is knowing at the core, core, core of who I truly am, that I am not just this physical expression that I am not just this physical body and that there's something deeper here at play, that I'm not just out in this world playing around and going through trials and tribulations. And I'm just this like person, like having all these situations, going to work, eating, paying taxes and doing all the things that life has us doing. There's an acknowledgement or a recognition or a resonance beyond the physical beyond the 3D tangible world, the externalized realm, which represents the masculine, right? That's the essence of the feminine. That's the trust. It's not something that we can wait to see, taste, or touch. It's something that is intuitive. It's something that is known without knowing how you know. It's something that you come into resonance with. And the number one thing that has allowed me to feel safe and fully trust which is what someone put in the chat box. So I'm addressing this is coming into, especially, yeah, coming into this acknowledgement that what I see in the 3D tangible world is not the ultimate truth. It's two sides, it's one side of, there's another side that is unseen, that is the essence of who I truly am that makes all of this possible and is one with all of this. And it's if we operate as a separate individual running around disconnected from everybody, which is pretty much 99% of the human race, walking around feeling separate, walking around feeling disconnected from each other, from life, from nature, from everything, then what we have are a bunch of separate little egos running around in fear trying to validate each other, or butt up against each other, trying to confirm each other's worthiness by validating each other, using relationships to validate or any other externalized carrot we can grasp onto to, to validate. And it perpetuates the cycle of constantly seeking outside of yourself, right? Because we're all operating from a disconnected place. We're operating from a place of feeling alone or unsafe or disconnected and you may or may not see how this relates to your immediate 3d situation but it does right so it's it's coming into alignment with the part and i can't even say the word part but with the truth of your divine nature the truth of your divine nature which is that you're having a physical experience called your life but that life that you're having is not what it seems it's part of the story but there's a whole nother part below the surface that is not being acknowledged or embodied or that is being suppressed or rejected in some way because we're operating from the mental body the fears and the illusions of the mind and the dual, dualistic mind and the egoic nature that wants to keep us um, anywhere but in our presence and in our essence. The ego wants to keep us anywhere but in our presence and in our essence. 
if that's making sense. So when you're embarking, when you're embarking on this feminine embodiment journey, what you're really embarking on is a journey to self-realization and a journey to sovereignty as a divinely worthy being and a journey to oneness with all that is because you can't separate energy. And at the root of who you are, your energy, your consciousness, your awareness, can't draw a line and say, here's energy over here and here's energy over here. It's all connected. When you start to operate from a place of connectedness with all things versus disconnected and separateness from all things, what happens is you begin to feel safe you're able to trust, you have compassion where you normally didn't, uh, things just naturally start to ooze uni union quality kind of virtues. So harmonious, you know, love, compassion, empathy, not only for self, but for others as well, because there is no disconnect there. Does that make sense? I hope uh, I could go on this tangent forever, but I know we're at the hour. And so I want to make sure I'm conscious of everybody's time. And I want to see if anybody has any final questions or comments. Um, is this making sense or does this resonate in any way? I shouldn't say it's, I got to stop saying, does this make sense? Because I'm not speaking to the mental body, even though our mind will grasp onto concepts and try to make sense of things. I'm speaking to something that is beyond the mental body that can be resonated with. It's an energetic uh, resonance with, with some of the messages that come through, um, or it's not. And if it's not, then just disregard. But if it is resonating on a deeper level, then, then you know that that message was meant for you. I'll touch on the feminine really quick, if you guys want, on the light feminine and the dark feminine. It's a perfect example of the yin and the yang. Um, um, the dualistic nature of the feminine energy. Let me see in the chat box. oh perfect okay so the light feminine the one when you think of feminine energy i just don't want to give this impression that feminine energy is just love and light and the, and all and pure and nurturing and all of those things there is that element of the feminine referring to the light feminine the light side of the feminine which is very nurturing, very caring, very empathetic, a pure, receptive energy, warm energy, um, that essence, that caring, that nurturing, that, that energy, that essence is part of the feminine. The other side of the coin for the feminine is the, what's called the dark feminine. And the dark feminine represents this uh, fiery element. It's very, um, it's very passionate. It's very creative. It's very trans is rooted in transformation and it's rooted in cycles of death and rebirth. And it is very, um, yeah, it's this very fiery transformative energy, alchemical energy rooted in death and rebirth. And this is the kind of energy that is harnessed when you're going through some of these cyclical changes, when you're closing out a cycle and you're opening up to a new beginning. This is often um, the fa dark feminine energy is the one that you're working with and that you're embodying. She also, the dark feminine also embraces all facets of herself. So sensuality and sexuality, although it's no longer used as you know, maybe a form of manipulation or a form of being able to prop up a false sense of confidence or anything, because that can be a thing when in the shadows of the dark feminine, when you're using, let's say, your sensuality or sexuality or something like that to um, to manipulate in some way or get some kind of outcome for yourself, very self-serving or um, to manipulate a situation in some way or to gain some sort of external validation in some way and things like that. Um, but when you're just in your essence for the pure joy of being in your essence, that's part of this feminine energy too. And that involves all of your sensuality. It's very sacral chakra, right? So the fem the dark feminine is the other side of the coin um, for the feminine. You actually need both um, as you embark on this journey. They go hand in hand, as you can guess, they can't be separated. But when you go through these big transformative cycles um, where you're exiting a cycle and you know you're, you're opening up to a new beginning, like Carmen shared earlier, 
you are accessing the dark feminine side and um, this fiery, alchemical, transformative energy. So they're both. And some people I know, you know, referenced on the last event that I held that they were noticing women in their environment that seemed to be very naturally confident in their skin and naturally flowing and naturally sensual and things like that. And it was just very alluring and it was very, you know, enticing to them. And what was being reflected was that aspect in themselves that has felt that they're not able to safely express any of that. Um, and that's part of this process as well. So I just wanted to touch on that because it's a question that often gets asked. And so whoever's watching this now, maybe some of that resonated, or if you're watching this on the replay, maybe some of that resonated, but okay. I want to make sure if anybody had any final questions to go ahead and come off um, mute and go ahead and ask or any comments, you can feel free to do that or drop them in the comments and I will watch or read through all the comments immediately after this recording is processed. That's the first thing I love to do. So thank you for commenting. If you do, I'd love to hear your, your feedback if you got value from this. And keep an eye out for your inbox, uh, for your emails. I will be sending out a replay. So if you want to uh, check in on the replay, you're more than welcome to. And I'll also be sending links if you want to dive deeper into this body of work. There's going to be two different offerings that are available. And that will be in the email as well. And you can always reply to that email if you have any questions whatsoever. Or if you're watching this on the replay, it'll be in the caption somewhere, wherever you're watching this video. All right, ladies, you have a beautiful rest of your day and also a safe holiday weekend coming up if you're celebrating and hope to see you soon on another event or inside. Um, if you're deciding to dive deeper inside uh, one of the programs that are available and I will see you there.